After a grueling pre-season, 26 regular season rounds and a playoff semi-final, everything comes down to the visit of Workington Town at Odsall Stadium on Sunday in the Betfred League One playoff final. Yeah, and it's the same for the opposition. Yeah, it's all down to this uh, 80 minutes and I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, we're in a great place. Uh, psychologically, they're in a, the players are in a great place. Physically, they're in a great place, except for the odd one or two. And as a team, they're in a great place. So I'm, I'm very, very much looking forward to uh, welcoming Workington to, uh, to Odsall, especially, uh, you know, we know that they're going to present a formidable challenge because they've beaten us twice already. After that 47-0 semi-final win over Oldham, do you feel like the side's in a, a different place mentally? No, I think it's the best they've played. And uh, it's the best they've played because I just felt everybody did their role and did their role very efficiently. And because that was the case, it, it came through as a real polished performance, both with the ball and without the ball. So, uh, you know, it, it, it really does build your confidence to go into the, such a crucial game, having played so well in, again, what was a crucial game, because if you didn't win that, you wouldn't be in the final, which we, we are this week. You're only as good as your, your last game, but how important is it that you, you had the best 80 minutes of the season leading into the final? I think it's really important, but uh, I hope it's going to be trumped and I hope this 80 minutes is going to be better than that one, you know, but uh, it was a fair old 80 minutes was that. and. Uh, you know, I thought the referee was excellent and uh, it was significant. I felt that we had an experienced Super League ref who played the game at a, at a fair old pace, which is what we want. And because uh, we do feel as if we're good footballers and we can play the game. But, uh, you know, and we'll have to wait and see what's, what's thrown up this week. But delighted with what we saw last week and obviously preparing very in, in great detail for what we're facing this week. You mentioned after the game Sunday that you'd already started your homework on yeah. Doncaster and Workington. How's that preparation uh, been in this week leading into the final, John? I'm guessing that's really intensified. Uh, everything has been combed over, nothing being left to chance. No, we, we've chucked all the Doncaster stuff in the bin. That's the first one. That was the first job we did. But, you know, all the Workington stuff really helped us and uh, we're able to take that body of knowledge and those clips that we'd highlighted and look at their game against Doncaster and see if they were they were still relevant to those and, and they played very well against Doncaster you know my, my word I mean to go to the keep mode and come away with a, a two score victory which is what Workington did they played really well and uh, they seem to be pretty healthy with troops as well so again it's a matter that uh, it's going to be a big challenge but a final should be a big challenge you know a final shouldn't be gimmies finals you should have to work for and we realise we're going to have to work really hard for it there's obviously going to be lots of competition for a place to play in the final, John. Have you got your 17 yet? No, no, not yet. No, we, we, I, I honestly don't believe we'll get the 17 until probably Thursday. Uh, we're going to try some things at, uh, at practice tonight and uh, we'll see how the players feel with them, whether they feel comfortable with them. And if they do, that may well influence who we select and also... There's also a, a, where you look at the opposition and you think, well, who's best for facing th this mob? And, and again, that will come into account. So once we've seen the practice, once we've, we've actually finalised all the Workington clips and all our notes on Workington, then Lee BT and Mark Dunning and myself will sit down. And just as we had last year, uh, last week, it took us about 80 minutes to pick the team. Well, I can see us having a similar length of time again with you know, a couple of cups of coffee and lots of discussions, so hopefully we get the right 17. That's great insight from yourself, John, because as you mentioned, after the playoff victory over Oldham, you're not just picking the same side every week, you're actually changing the side to fit the dynamics of the opposition. Yeah, I think you've got to do, you know, you, you have to change the side to fit what, what you're doing well and uh, what, what you want to do, but also you change the side as well with, with due respect to the opposition and what they bring to the table. So again, that will be a, a fair old discussion point and there'll be a fair few heads scratched and, you know, and as, as I say, it's not going to be an easy thing because we've got lots of players who are fit, lots of players who are able, lots of players in good form and it's a matter of us attempting to get the correct 17 for that job. In terms of players that won't be playing, John, is there, can you tell us the players that are, are, are injured or doubtful? Well, the Tyler Godo is doubtful, uh, but I mean, Castleford are tremendous with their medical staff. 
uh, as we've mentioned before with Matty Crowder, the, the England physio, and uh, he, he's, he's going for a scan and then Matty will really work very, very hard with his rehab and obviously we'll try and get him out there because he is a bit of strikeout in the centre as, as well as being defensively good. So, you know, th th we'll be relying on Matty to, to work his magic and uh, and hopefully we'll do that. But if, if there's any doubt whatsoever, we've obviously got lots of options as well uh, in the three quarters. So, you know, it's not a do or die stuff and it's not forcing him out if he's not if he's not fully fit. We'll make sure that he's fully fit. If he is, he'll play. If he isn't, somebody else will take his place. Having played Workington twice already, John, uh, what have you learned uh, from how Workington play? Well, they're a very good, they're a very experienced team. And as I think I, I said after the last game, they all manned us a bit. And it was down to your, your Wilkes, your, your Scholars, your Penkovic, your Newtons. But were very very clever you know and uh, they really did and, and and having watched the Doncaster game and other Workington games that's what they bring consistently and they're a, a tough team they play very direct uh, they play very aggressive and they've got a couple of good halfbacks as well who are good organizers and obviously they've got one halfback in particular who scored against us who's, who's a good, got a good running game as well so we know full well we're, we're going to be challenged, but uh, you know it's a final, and, and you should be. With that in mind, then, John, how would you plan to combat that experience factor with obviously working to having those senior, experienced players? Well, we're better because we've got Ash Gibson back. You know, he, he had something. Jay Hitchcock's had something as well. They're experienced players, and obviously we've got James Green out there now. So we've got Green, Peltier, and Crossley, as well as Flanagan, who, who've got some miles on the clock. So it's not quite as young and naive, perhaps, as it was at the start of the season. So, you know, we feel quite happy that you put them with your Garcia, your Minchellas, who've also played many games. You think, well, yeah, we're looking all right experience-wise as well. And with that in mind as well, John, you know, how do you feel that the experience of what the, the players have experienced already this season, how do you feel that can benefit them in the final on Sunday? I think it benefit them in the final. I think it'll benefit them in years to come as well. You know, it's been a tough old league. It is a tough old league. And uh, you have to earn everything. You have to t you have to deal with a lot of travel, and uh, it's it really does challenge you logistically as well as on the playing field and on the practice field. So, yeah, it's been tough, but it's been good, and and we'll benefit from this year that we've had in League One. A, a clear clear message that you've been sending to the the players is uh, a team before self. What's the ethos behind that? Well, yeah, because it, again, we've said do your own role. Don't bother about what anybody else is doing because we all understand what we should do individually. And if every individual does their own role, it looks like a good team. And I think that's exactly what we got with uh, with, with the group on, on on Sunday. Yourself, Lee B team, Matt Dunning, the coaching staff, the players, important role to play on Sunday. The fans can also play a big part, John. Yeah, the fans is massive. I mean, I, I just appeal to all Bradford fans, please come along. You know, come along and watch it live. I know it's it's great streaming, it's great to watch it on your laptop or whatever. But please come along and watch it live because we need to generate that sort of. Well, we need a wall of sound, in all honesty, and a wall of sound that's pro Bradford, and we need to make it intimidating for the opposition, and we need to make it so that when we're tired and we're defending that line, just as we're against Oldham in the last few seconds, you know, we really did take some energy from the from the fans. So. You know, please come along, please come along, watch it live and please get behind the team because you're very, very important to us all.